Hi there, a much less ill Mahinkasaur here for the gamer to show you how to breed your Pokemon for perfect IVs. First of all, let's all remember that every Pokemon is unique and special in its own way, and all those boxes full of failed non-competitively viable Pokemon still need homes. So think about adopting a Pokemon today. That being said, here's how to get the best IV Pokemon ready for battle. Now IVs stand for individual values and represents how well a Pokemon's stat is like attack, defense, speed. Each Pokemon has a certain IV anywhere between 0 and 31, with 0 being the worst and 31 being the best. In this video, I'm going to show you how to breed your Pokemon in order to pass down those perfect 31 IVs until we get the best Pokemon for competitive battling. <laughs> First, you're going to need the Destiny Knot. This item is going to come in handy when breeding as it makes the baby Pokemon take on 5 IVs from either parent with the last IV being completely random. Which parent the IVs come from is also random but we'll get to this later. The Destiny Knot can be found on Route 224 and can only be accessed after you've beaten the Elite Four you noobs. To get there, first enter Victory Road from the back which is the Elite Four side, then go southwards and cross the bridge then use B-Barrel's face as a skateboard as you use Rock Climb, then go leftwards, upwards, leftwards again and go up some stairs. Cross another bridge and keep going rightwards until you find a door which you'll enter. Keep following the path and if it's your first time here you'll bump into Marley. Continue going through the cave with her until you reach Route 224, where near a Dragon Tamer you'll find the item. <laughs> Next up, we'll need the judge function installed on your PC. To do this, head to the battle tower and talk to the scientist with the blue hair on the right. He'll install the judge function on your PC so that with the press of a plus button on any Pokemon in your PC, you can see how your Pokemon's stats are doing. The game doesn't straight up tell you what number IVs your Pokemon have because you know that'd just be too easy. Instead, you're given an adjective to roughly describe how many IVs they have and here's what they all mean. It's always a good idea to have some high IV dittos lying around when breeding for the best IVs because it's always hot girl summer for ditto as they can and will breed with anything. Dittos can be found in a few places but the best place to get them is on route 218 uh, by using the poker radar because when you use the poker radar on your 20th, 30th, 40th and 100th encounter whilst chaining guarantees a few perfect IVs. The list is as shows. Next up, it's always useful to have the Oval Charm. This item ups the chance your Pokemon will produce an egg, and to get it, first go to Valor Lakefront and battle Morimoto who has a surprisingly good team. After you defeat him, you'll be awarded with the Oval Charm. Now, the last thing to get on the list before we start breeding is a Pokemon with the ability Flame Body, like a Magby or a Slugma. Slugmas can be found in the Grand Underground as well as Stark Mountain, and Magbys can be found in the Grand Underground, but only if you have Shining Pearl. A Pokemon with the ability Flame Body, when on your team, hatches eggs a lot faster and boy are there a lot of eggs to hatch. One thing to also mention which I completely forgot to do is about Pokemon natures. Now Pokemon natures are an important thing to think about when breeding for competitive Pokemon as they determine a Pokemon's increase and decrease to certain stats and an Everstone when held by a parent passes down its nature to its offspring. Because I'm an idiot, I forgot about this, but be sure to do this with the right natures using the Everstone as well as the Destiny Knot to pass down the perfect IVs. Now we got all the components to breed, let me explain to you how breeding is going to work. Ideally you're going to want to match up two Pokemon with a few best IVs. Normally you would use the Pokemon you want to breed and one of your high IV dittos, but luckily I had some high IV Nosepass already from using the Pokerator. And in order to keep eggs pumping out of Nosepass like it's a factory hen, you're going to want to take as many steps as you can until this man over here gives you your next egg. The quickest way I found to hatch and produce more eggs is to go round and round in circles on your bike and with the oval charm in effect and your flame body pokemon melting eggs away, you'll quickly have more eggs than you know what to do with. This is a long process but keep checking on the IVs of your newly hatched pokemon and when more IVs have successfully transferred to that pokemon, replace the parent with it and keep the cycle going. And for example the way I started it off was by using these two nose pass. 
Luckily, one had perfect IVs in special defense and speed, whilst the other had them in special attack and HP. I kept hatching eggs from these two until one had three perfect IVs, and then I replaced the parent with it and continued the process. As you can see, it's a matter of changing Pokemon to increase the chances of getting more perfect IVs, but with the sixth IV always being random, there is a point where you'll have to rely on luck for that perfect sixth IV. But you know, in most cases, five IVs is still pretty good too. Using this method and constantly swapping Nosepass when necessary, I managed to end up with a female with five perfect IVs and a male with four perfect IVs. Not quite six yet, but with some persistence, time and luck, six perfect IVs isn't far away now. Keep this going, and if you already have a few perfect IV dittos from older games, it's really just a question now of when Pokemon Home is gonna open. And that's how to breed Pokemon for perfect IVs. The method to do this gets quite dark if you think about it, but you know, just don't, don't think about it. And by the end, you'll have perfect Pokemon with the best IVs. I've been Mahin Kasol for The Gamer, see ya!